Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Spyderco Pacific Salt 2 in LC200N steel. I'm going to be linking this guy right down in the description. For those of you watching this video wondering, should I go with the yellow one and H1? Should I go with this? Should I go with the other? This one. This one is definitely the, the best version of it. Like if, if that's what you're here for, you can sit around and watch my full 15 to 20 minute review. This one, definitely. <laughs> Seriously, we're going to talk all about why uh, here in a sec. But first of, all, I'd like to, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Nick Shabazz for sending this guy in. I uh, really appreciate that. Check out Nick Shabazz if you haven't. I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, every, everybody knows who Nick is. But uh, yeah, check him out if you haven't. And uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you're enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support me too, there's a link right down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. You can get your hands on some uh, cool stickers and other benefits. And please follow me Whoops, on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. This guy's very similar in size. It's almost exactly the same size as the Spyderco Endura. So if you have an Endura and you're looking at this guy, right, overall length, coming in at about 8.75 inches overall. Blade length is coming in at about 3.75. Cutting edge though, because of this area here, is coming in at about 3.3 inches overall. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. The Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 over uh, 8, 8 .6 inches overall. So the uh, Pacific Salt 2, definitely a little bit longer. How about up against the uh, Spyderco uh, I'm sorry, PM2, Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. It's a good size comparison there. How about up against the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. God dang, I have some of that adhesive on my thumb. Uh, how's the action on this guy? Well... This is a lockback knife. These are made in Seki City, Japan. Uh, Spyderco makes knives in the USA, but they make knives in China. They make knives in Japan. In Italy, uh, do they have some that are made in Germany? I don't know. They're all over the place, right? It's made in Japan, so the same areas. You know what we should do up against the Delica? I always forget that I have a titanium Delica up here. Same size as a regular Delica. There you go. Uh, Delica versus Pacific, to uh, Pacific Salt 2. Length on the Delica coming in at about seven and a quarter inches overall. So very similar, maybe a little bit less. Very similar to the Spyderco Para 3. Is it the same size as the Para 3? Yeah, it is. I always forget that. But yeah, uh, anyways, it's a uh, back lock, lock back, whatever it is that, uh, however you want to say that, right? Um, the action's fine. It's about what I expect, right? It's got that nice snap into place and it locks out just fine. Uh, doesn't feel gritty or anything like that. This is not going to be the most fidget friendly knife, but you can easily wheel it out with one hand, right? And I'm sure at some point some people can flick it or wrist flick it if you really want to do that. I don't know why you need to just open it like this, right? And then you can sort of push that button down, shake it, have the uh, flat here underneath the uh, blade sort of stop or rest on your finger, reposition your hand, and then close it. So, yeah, kind of clunky, but that's the way that these things are, and that's fine. It's, it's plenty easy to open this way. Let's go ahead and do a uh, hardware check on this guy, get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the uh, description. I believe the pivot is going to be T8. Let's check. Yeah, T8, and then the rest of the screws are going to be T6, which, eh, there's a there's a lot of them, right? One, two, three, wait a second, is that the case? Yeah, okay, yeah, it is. It's not, not that many. This is this is a knife that can be taken apart. I, I don't know. It, it's not a knife that I would love to take apart, but I don't think it's going to be massively complicated. You have that tension there that you got to consider. Um, when you're putting it back together, right, with the, the back lock, I, I know a lot of times that you're getting the blade in properly. If you're going to take it completely apart, you don't necessarily have to if you're going to clean it out, right? But 
I think on a lot of these you have to like hold the back lock down and then position the blade and then screw something in and then release it right or something like that. I think it, most people are going to be able to figure it out just fine. You got some T6 screws. I don't like T6. I'd rather everything be T8 or bigger, but it's not that big of a deal. This isn't a deal breaker. It's not a reason not to pick up the knife. It's going to be fine. And for the most part, you're probably not going to have to take this guy apart because there's not, uh, not a lot going on here on the internals, right? It's truthfully, let's take a look here. You can pick up my flashlight down in the description as well. No uh, cartridge liner, right? It's just all this uh, injection mold plastic, and then you. Um, the, uh, the the there's not a lot in here to have to um, to clean out. It's pretty simple. Um, so I'm not somebody who would be wanting to take this apart all the time. Of course, you know sometimes adjustments are necessary, and for those of you who find yourselves needing to take this knife apart. Um, yeah, you're going to have to work with a few extra T6 screws and this back lock here, but not really that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here that it is actually just a little bit thinner than the Para 3, so that's interesting. Length and height up against two knives with awkward carry profiles that nobody ever really seems to complain about. PM2 and Para 3, you can see here it is definitely longer than both and probably about the same height. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at, because we're at an angle here, so I'm looking towards me. It's about the same height. So it's not thick, and it's not heavy, but it's definitely a large object, and, you know, by a lot of people's, you know, definition of tall, it's going to be a tall blade. Uh, uh, dimensions this way, let's go ahead and, ah, that doesn't want to stand up. <laughs> let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness um, on this guy. I'm going to guess this is probably 100 and 25 thousandths or so, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, who knows? Blade stock thickness back here coming in. Okay, it's 125 thousandths. All right, so a spot on, right? Like I said, we're looking at the uh, FRN or injection mold plastic, whatever it is that you want to call that, right? Very strong, very lightweight plastic, no steel liners. We do have steel on the backspacer and, of course, steel for the blade, some steel parts. Not heavy. This is a very lightweight knife for what you're looking at 2.54 ounces. Yeah, the the profile of the blade might create some issues for some people, right? If you're EDCing, this is going to be kind of a weird knife to carry in khakis, right? But it's lightweight enough and it's thin enough that for, for the most part, it's not going to bother a lot of people unless you're bothered by this measurement here or the, just the overall length of it. And it's going to be illegal for some people to carry, hilariously enough, right? Because of the blade length. It's just it is what it is. So consider that before you pick it up. For the most part, most people are going to be just fine carrying this knife. All right, so what's the deal with this thing? Pacific Salt 2. LC200N is essentially impervious to corrosion, right? So is H1. Yeah, um, but LC200N has way better edge retention. Honestly, this is one of those new steels that a lot of people are just considering like all the way around the best steel because you get really good edge retention, perhaps approaching... <clears throat> the same level of edge retention that you get with S30V, which is pretty amazing, right? Um, pretty tough and very easy to sharpen. And it's impervious to corrosion. That That's really, really great. That means if you live near the ocean or you don't or wherever, right? If you live in space, whatever. Um, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no idea how this knife would do in space. I don't know why I said that. No, that, that don't take me seriously there. But yeah, if you live near the ocean, if you work in the ocean, around the ocean, you live in an area where corrosion is an issue, have no fear because you can use this steel and you don't have to deal with the abysmal edge retention of H1. H1 is fine because it's really stainless and it's very easy to sharpen. It won't hold an edge for hardly, I mean, it's it's like nothing, right? Just It just won't hold an edge at all. This is going to hold an edge way longer and it's just as stainless, right? Uh, in fact, it, I don't know if it's even more stainless. I don't know. Yeah, LC200N, fantastic steel. We're going to be seeing a lot more of it. I, ho I honestly hope we see a lot of different Spyderco sprints in LC200N. Um, but that's reason enough to pick this up, right? So that's the deal with LC200N, absolutely. Like I said, you can pick this up down in the description. Uh, the scales, I, I don't personally like FRN. I also think... <clears throat> Excuse me. I also think the texture pattern is kind of weird, but it does a good job functionally. It does what it's supposed to do. You're not going to slip off this knife. These little squares or these little shingles here are actually angled, you know, in two different directions, right? So if you're 
pulling this way, right, you're going to get grippage going down. And if you're going, you know, if you're, if you're for whatever reason slipping up on the knife, it's going to be, your, your hand is going to be locked in place. And honestly, ergonomically, it's pretty comfortable. There's a ton of room on this handle. Choke back, choke up. You can honestly choke up here just a little bit, even though it's not very comfortable. All these knives need to have forward choils. This area right here is stupid. It's stupid. Why? Just make this a forward choil. I don't understand. Why Why do we have a freaking 90 degree angle there? That's so dumb. The, uh, the, the bird line does the exact same thing, right? The budget Spyderco brand. They do the essentially the same models with slightly varying dimensions and lengths, right? But this area is always a choil. Just make it a choil. Sorry, I'm getting really aggressive about that. It just seems like such a stupid area on the knife. But anyways, the rest of it's fine. It's very comfortable, right? Nice ramp here. Uh, with jimping on it very very this this knife isn't going anywhere and honestly the Spyderco clip really doesn't create that much of a problem for me So it's fine It's bright green. Holy crap. <laughs> I like this way better than the yellow Honestly, I have kind of a weird fascination with the toxic green thing. So I kind of think it's cool um, I would like this knife way more if it was in uh, toxic green g10 Which is just as strong as this stuff. It's a little teeny tiny bit heavier, right? You might gain an extra you know, 0.2 ounces. Oh my gosh, right? Still be fine. Uh, but okay, it's in the FRN. I'm fine with that. It's going to be plenty strong. We've got two different uh, sides for the pocket clip, which is actually no. You can you can mount this clip any which way you want. Tip up, tip down, right or left-handed carry, which is great because this is an ambidextrous knife, which means lefties can enjoy it. People who, you know, like to carry tip down for whatever reason, you can enjoy it and you can do this, you know, safely because it doesn't have a flipper tab on it. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, you can check out some of my other content where I talk in depth about that. But anyways, tip up, tip down, right or left-handed carry, it's all great. That's fantastic. Lefties rejoice, right? Finish on the blade is satin. That's fine. Lots of Spydercos have satin finishes. They tend to be a little bit sharp up here on the edges, and you can see that's the case here. Not that big of a deal. Uh, this is a Pelican beak blade. I what I what do we call this? I don't know. It's fine though. It's fully flat ground. It's very thin behind the edge, and there's a little tip there. Not not so pokey, but for your breaching task, you'll still get it done. Draw cuts, it's just fine. Cutting into packages, whatever it is, right? Doing ocean stuff, whatever ocean things you cut with this, I'm sure it'll be just fine. I don't know. I don't work in the ocean, but I can understand why people who do work in, in and around salt water or in an environment that uh, corrosion might be a problem, why they might appreciate something like this. Absolutely, because it's not going to corrode, right? The blade is going to be very versatile. It's plenty thin behind the edge and reasonably durable. The tip is definitely going to be the weakest point, so don't go prying around with this, but you should be fine. Um, pretty good. I don't have an issue there. As is the case with all Spydercos, it does not have a sharpening choil, so... You're going to get some wonkiness as you sharpen this over time, but you're still going to be just fine. Um, you can see the uh, insignia there, the, the Sal Glesser insignia. Um, that's the, the designer, the head of the original head of Spyderco. I believe it's actually run by Eric Glesser, now his son. Um, but I think everybody knows that now. It says Seki City Japan over here, and then it says Spyderco LC200N and has the Spyderco bug on this side. I think that's fine. Um, all of the uh, hardware is uh, blacked out or coated, which, you know... Considering these are the parts that are steel, I think that's a good choice. Uh, the parts themselves that are crucial, you know, to the structural integrity, uh, with them being steel, it's it's good, you know, since this knife is designed to be used in and around salt water or environments that might cause corrosion to steel parts. Uh, I think it's good that they coated that, so that's going to add some extra protection uh, protection there. Uh, but the uh, the type of steel that they use uh, for the hardware is extremely stainless in and of itself, so it's probably not something you're going to have to worry about. The lanyard hole is part of the pocket clip. I, honestly, I can see why. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hang on. I'm gonna take a step back. Usually, this is the part that I say, "Oh, you know, for those seven people who like lanyards, oh, oh same joke over and over again." Yeah, that's the, that's the way I feel about lanyard holes. I think they're kind of dumb. But honestly, I mean, for somebody who actually is working in the ocean. I can see more of a reason to want to have a lanyard, right? I mean, you might actually want to connect this knife to your person so that it doesn't fall to the very bottom of the Marianas Trench, right? I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I, I get it. Some situations, you know, a lanyard's going to be useful. For the vast majority of us, it's not going to be. But considering this knife, maybe, maybe I don't know, I can, I can see it a little bit better. Pocket clip is your standard Spyderco clip. In this case, it doesn't carry too deep... Uh, it doesn't carry deep at all. It carries, yeah, we're bordering on shallow, but it's not bad. It's fine. It's it's going to do the job. I've never really had an issue with the Spyderco clip, right? In and out of the pants, it's going to be fine. 
kind of like the black and the green look. It looks cool, right? Some people are going to hate that. Um, there's jimping back here, actually, on the, uh, the, the backspacer and on the uh, actual scales, which I think is good. That's going to add to the ergonomic, you know, just the, the grippage of this knife. You're, you're not going to drop this thing. Absolutely not. Uh, the knife uh, does not have any blade play, to my knowledge. Yeah, it's completely and totally solid. There's no blade play, but it isn't centered. Um, I've seen this actually quite a bit with, like, you know, the, the Seki City Japan knives, and honestly, like, the FRN Spydercos in general, whether it's the Native 5 Lightweight, the, the Para 3, the Manix 2, it's kind of a dice roll on whether or not you're going to get a centered blade. So it doesn't specifically have to do with any particular plant. I think it's I think that the mushiness or the flexibility of this material, it is very strong, but it flexes when everything's tightened down, and that creates kind of an issue when you're trying to get everything centered. If you're looking at G10 and steel, or especially like titanium, uh, if the tolerances are all good and the fit and finish is there, it's much easier to get a blade like that centered. Can you get this thing centered using the centering trick that I talk about? Yeah, I've got a video on how to center your blade. Yeah, probably, right? Loosen the pivot, loosen all the body screws, wedge the blade over to one side, tighten everything back down, right? I don't, there's, you can watch that video if you want to, to on, on how to get that centered, but that, that's fine. It's not rubbing, um, so that's okay. It's still for the money. I'd like to see it centered. So what does this come in at? You can get this for about a hundred bucks. Is it worth it? Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, it is. I mean, I personally would like this knife in G10. If it, you know, I'd pay 20 bucks more for G10. Centering, obviously, if that was, you know, good, I'd be a lot happier there. Um, but it's going to be really long for some people. Just because this is, you know, a knife that's called the Pacific 2 and it's clearly made, you know, for the pe people working in and around the ocean in mind, doesn't mean that you can't, you know, just enjoy it. The, the great thing about this is that no matter who you are, you can carry this around and EDC it and, it, and it's it's just such a low-maintenance knife, right? You just don't have to worry about babying it or oiling it up. You just use it, right? All you have to worry about is periodically adjusting the hardware so that everything stays tight and all that, uh, and sharpening it. That's it, right? That's all you have to worry. You don't have to worry about corrosion at all. Out here in Kansas, I have very little use for this. I, I don't have a problem with corrosion out here. This is a maximum uh, pair of three that I've been using for well over a year, and it is just barely got a patina on it. It's fine, right? This is nowhere near stainless. It's like 2% chromium and 4% car something. I don't know. what. It's not stainless, right? But for a lot of people, this is really going to be nice. Just the... Um, uh, basically the, the peace of mind, right? That the thing in their pocket, they're working all day, right? And you're, you're sweaty, right? If you, I remember working a hot summer days, uh, here in Kansas wearing jeans. And I remember one time pulling a, uh, D2 knife, one of my, it was an, an older rat a long time ago. And I had a little, little freckle on it at the end of the day. It's fine. It cleaned off, right? But that can happen, right? It's not not something you're really going to have to worry about with this knife. And this knife is going to be right at home in a ton of different environments, right? This is something that you could use if you worked on a construction site, right? It's not, you know, if you work uh, near a lake or, you know, you just whatever. If it's your general EDC knife, right? It doesn't really matter. I think this knife is going to be good for a lot of people. It's just really big. I think they need to do the Spyderco um, Delica in um, this exact configuration uh, for an, a more EDC friendly or EDC sized version of this knife. Green, an LC200N or whatever color an LC200N, I think that'd be great, but I think this is, I think this is good. Um, the, the, the FRN thing bothers me, the T6 screws uh, kind of bother me, the position and depth of the pocket clip kind of bother me, and the, the fact that the blade's not center kind of bothers me, but I I can deal with the other things and I can probably fix the blade centering. Honestly, for a hundred bucks, this knife exists in an area that, you know, there's there's not a lot of competition for this exactly. Um, so I think uh, for a lot of people, this is going to be the answer. Um, this is pretty cool. I like this. I really don't have a problem with the price. Um, I think uh, for those of you who are interested in this, I think you should check this out and I think you're going to be really happy with it. So like I said, use my link right down below. This is absolutely a recommendable knife and it'll be going on my recommended knives playlist along with my Spyderco knives playlist. So if you want to check that out, you can check out uh, all the uh, Spyderco knives I've reviewed. I'll also link Spyderco knives in general down there if you want to see what Spyderco's going on, got going on right now. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please 
leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that middle complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.